Again, a previously unknown meteor has been discovered with a trajectory that may impact Earth in the next 24 hours. It is suggested that everyone make appropriate preparations for long-term disruptions in all facets of life. Stay tuned for further emergency updates. Hello everybody. Jeff Eccles here with The Lonely Vine. And it happened. A meteor, a meteor struck the Earth. Now, before we go too much further, to all the folks out there that would be like, okay, if a meteor strikes the Earth and it blackens everything out, we're all going to be dead, blah, 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 blah. That's what not this is about. That's what this is not about. This is just about having some fun with the potential for the apocalyptic scenario and what kind of wines, what kind of wine would you pair with the apocalypse? So, you know, I think looking at the scenarios that tonight would be a good one to talk about the cold kind of environment. Uh, it's currently nine degrees, nine. And really, when it gets below double digits, do you really need numbers anymore? It's just effing cold. So that's where we're at. I'm out here in 9 degree weather. You know, I've been trying to trying to time it out right to have this like just the right amount of light and dark so that it made the kind of seem like Maybe the sun was out, but it was blocked by the ash of the meteorite. And, you know, it was just kind of hard to get it. And then I was like, I just want to do it because I really want to get out in the cold and drink some wine. So let's get to it. So I'm only tasting one wine on this, but I'm going to do it in two different ways. So let's start out uh, with just out of the bottle. So I have the, uh, the Rootstock Cellars. 2009 Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. Because in the post-apocalyptic world, you can still get wine from Napa Valley in Colorado. Absolutely. Gotta be on the lookout. Don't know what's gonna happen at night. And in post-apocalyptic meteor strike Jeff world, you still drink out of nice wine glasses. So it's a it's a nice apocalyptic world I live in. So color-wise, it's too dark, and you don't care. So let's just get right to the to the nose. It's so cold out. I doubt I'll smell anything, but we'll give it a try. You have to like though that the wine is so warm that it's steaming and fogging up the glass. So get a real nice cherry kind of thing coming off of this. Um, there's some nice tartness to it. There's that cranberry that I get in like every red wine, so why do I even say it? You know, I do get a little bit of oak presence in it as well coming through, but it's not like over oaked. It's not, you know, too big. And I do get a little bit of that pepper spice, which I'm excited about because it might give me some warmth. I don't get the alcohol, which right now I kind of wish I would, but kudos to them for hiding it. Okay, let's get the palate to it. Real nice balance of this wine. Um, I like the acidity that's coming through, that cherry's coming through, um, you know, there's a little bit of that pepper spice coming through. Um, and I'm really not getting the sense of the oak. I had a little concern I might, but I'm really not getting it. Let's get another taste here. It's got a nice finish to it. And overall, you know, I think this was a, I think this was a, about a $16 bottle. 
and I would recommend this one at $16. Nice Napa uh, Cabernet. It shows a lot of things that you expect out of it. Um, and on a night like tonight, even though the wine's already getting cold, you know, it still provides that warmth. It still gives you that, that little bit of heat not th that, uh, that you want. And uh, so there. Good. Okay, now the second one. I didn't want to bring it out because it's a mold wine. And so I'm going to go back into my cave. Not really. And uh, get it. So be right back. And I'm back. So, you know, there's lots of recipes out there for mold wine. Um, and mold wine, uh, if you don't know, it's it's heated up wine, and it's it's it can have a lot of different ingredients in it. Um, but you're generally looking at cloves, uh, you're looking at cinnamon, um, and then you know I've seen um, brown sugar or um, um, apple juice or or orange juice. Um, some you know there's some kind of sugar to kind of sweeten it up, and then generally a lot of people will have put brandy in it. Um, you know, to add a little bit more alcohol to it. Um, for the one that I did today, um, you know, I went real bare bones um, to, to keep with the motif of, you know, there's not a shop everywhere. Um, so with this one, I just went with some cinnamon, I went with some clove, I went with some orange, orange uh, um, juice, squeezed orange juice. Um, I went with some brown sugar for the sweetness and I went with a little bit of lemon juice as well. So you can see I did put it in a glass, you know, usually I would put this in like a coffee mug or, you know, something to kind of keep it warm, but I wanted to show you that, you know, you put a little orange slice in there to add to it. You can also put a cinnamon stick in there, um, but I didn't have one, so I didn't do it. So, uh, so this is going to be the same rootstock wine, just the mold version. You can see it's steaming, it feels great. Uh, even through my gloves, I'm feeling the warmth of it. Um, so let's see how this, uh, you know, we may as well go check the nose. You know, as expected, what's coming through is those spices I added to it. There's the cinnamon, uh, there's the clove, and that's pretty much it. That's what's coming through. So let's get the palate to it and see what this does for me. Okay, so in this environment, a mold wine's gonna work really good. You know, you don't heat it up to boiling or anything like that. But you know, there's that sweetness from the sugar that's in it. There's that, those warming spices from like the cinnamon and the cloves. Um, you know, and it just tastes delicious. And may you just feel the warmth. You know, it's like a hot, a hot apple cider, or hot cocoa or anything like that that you may have. It just, yeah, as you swallow, you just feel that warmth run through you. Yeah, so, there you have it. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this. <laughs> um, so let's see, question for the show. Have you ever had a mulled wine? If you have, uh, what did you think of it? And uh, do you have a favorite recipe for it? So I think that does it for me. I think I'm going to get out of the cold, and uh, until next time, everybody, cheers, and 